sitting at 13 and 15, 10 seed in the Eastern Conference, and facing a rough stretch of the schedule coming up. The Raptors are certainly not where they would have liked to have been at this point in the season, and with the trade season officially kicking off, you know, with a lot of trade restrictions being lifted, it looks like the Raptors may have something up their sleeve. What's up everybody? It's JJ Buckets. I pretty much told you what we're going to talk about today, so not going to delay any further on that. Just make sure you are leaving a like on the video if you enjoy it. I, it really helps the algorithm a lot and the algorithm has not been easy to navigate recently, so thank you. Plus, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. And if you plan on doing any sports betting in the future, just make sure to check out my link in the description below. Let's take a look at the stretch of games the Raptors have coming up. And I want you to ask yourself genuinely, based on the way the team has been performing lately, how many of these do you see the Raptors winning? Because you got the Nets tonight, then you have the Warriors, which, you know, with Steph Curry being out of the lineup is an easier game than it otherwise would have been. You have at Philadelphia, you have at the Knicks, you have at the Cavs, you have the Clippers after that, you have the Grizzlies after that, and you have the Suns after that. So, <laughs> That is a lot of tough games that the Raptors have coming up on the schedule and needless to say, with how they've been playing recently, it's a little difficult to see them envisioning a lot, or sorry, it's a little difficult to envision them winning a lot of those games. Mm. <laughs> Especially the OG Ananobi injury recently really just doesn't help this team at all whatsoever. Obviously a team that struggled with injuries all season, but you really see a lot more deficiencies of this team when OG is out, especially defensively that, yeah, like looking at that stretch of games, it doesn't look good. And you know, with the floodgates completely open in terms of the trades and a lot of guys, like the restrictions from the offseason and when they signed being lifted and so many more of these players being tradable, the Raptors are obviously poised and in a position where they can make changes to the roster should they want to. The question, or I guess the big question here though, is which direction is it gonna be in? So, there was a report um, not too long ago on NBA Central talking about how if the Raptors remain around 500, we could see or rival execs expect quote unquote fireworks, which is interesting. Again, uh, I think the discussion there goes fireworks in what direction? And the article there itself didn't necessarily specify in which direction, that's the thing. They expect the Raptors to move one way or the other. Um, if they do kind of remain hovering around the 500 mark where they kind of are now, so does Masai Ujiri blow it up? Does Masai Ujiri go all in? What are the moves to go all in? Like currently from what we've seen, we've seen some rumors floating about potentially trading Gary Trent Jr., um, which makes a lot of sense. He has his player option coming up at the end of this season. Does he think there's a chance he can get paid somewhere that's not Toronto? Because does Toronto maybe necessarily pay him with another team with more cap space and in need of a player like Gary Trent Jr. that will always be in demand around the league, quite frankly? Is there a team out there that's going to price Toronto out? I, quite frankly, I think there's a good chance that there is. So him floating around in trade rumors does make a lot of sense to me. But it's maybe necessarily the teams he's linked to aren't the most impressive list of teams in terms of trade packages available coming back. Lakers, Suns, Warriors, Hawks, and Heat are the teams interested in the services of Gary Trent Jr. So I look at that and you can either look at the positive or the negative because there's one each there. If you're looking for a win now move, you're certainly not going to find it there because those are teams that are trying to make a win now move that see Gary Trent Jr. as a piece that will help them win now. So that's not really available, but you know, if you're hovering around 500 or quite frankly, maybe a little worse and you're looking to tear it down, there are moves available there. There are definitely moves available there. You definitely can see, you know, for example, a package coming out of Golden State that circulate something around Jonathan Kaminga, James Wiseman, Moses Moody, like they have those prospects, they can move those prospects to a team that, you know, is looking to retool for the future and not looking to compete for anything this season. That move is definitely available for them there. So that could be an interesting thing that floats together. And I think my whole point of highlighting this is quite frankly, if you're hovering around 500 and you're expecting fireworks, quote unquote, 
if you kind of stay there. There's a lot more room to, you know, tear it down and compete at a future season than there is to win now right now. Like, just looking around the league, right, where do you see your win now moves? Are you looking at Chicago that's potentially going to tear it down as well? And a guy like Zach Levine? I mean, Zach Levine's a good player. Zach Levine's a very good player, and he'll definitely help your half-court offense, but... Is he really going to be the last piece in a championship puzzle for you? Probably not, <laughs> right? Like, I don't think I'm crazy in saying that. Like, exactly means a good player, but he's not going to push you over the top. Are you looking at deals like the ones that have been circulating in terms of the rumor mill for Yaka Pirtle? Because Yaka, good player, very good player. Will he deliver you to the promised land? <laughs> Again, probably not. And especially with Yak, a lot of the uh, talk has, in terms of the rumor mill, has been that the Spurs are looking for two first round picks, you know, lightly protected. But if you're Toronto, are you really gonna give those two first round picks up to go get him? Given where you are at 500, like, is that really your big all in play? I wouldn't think so either, right? Like. It's hard looking at where the league is now and seeing where those win now moves are gonna come from. Like, there are obviously, again, there are gonna be teams making trades, but you're looking at some of those teams in terms of who's near the bottom, and there's not really that trade that you need if you're the Raptors that will really catapult you to where you wanna be as a championship contender this season. So. I think my big point here is if you're stuck in the middle and quote unquote, we're anticipating fireworks, I think those fireworks are gonna be to tear it down rather than to, you know, go all in. And like, I'm not a hundred, like when I say tear it down, I don't mean like, you know, just everything to a scratch. Like it's, think of it as a soft reboot as opposed to a hard reset on, you know, a movie franchise. Uh, I think that's more so what the Raptors are likely to do as things progress and if they continue to hover around 500 or quite frankly if they even start dipping realistically. I think those are things that we can definitely see. We can definitely see pieces of this core shipped off, packaged off somewhere for young assets, draft picks, stuff like that. I don't really think that's off the table. and. Does this feel like an overreaction to some extent to a rough stretch of the Raptors season? Maybe, but I don't want it to be treated as that. I think it's more so you got to look at realistically where you're at. And if you continue to hover where you are as a team and things continue to not really go your way in terms of, you know, pushing closer to being a championship team, there is a lot more room to you know, build young assets and try again in the future with a relatively young team outside of a couple of players, which quite frankly are probably gonna get shipped, <laughs> than there is to go all in because a lot of the all in moves that are available to you are kind of mediocre. And I guess that is my big point here. What do you think? If you're the Toronto Raptors and you kind of continue to trade water do you think the Raptors should go all in or do you think they should back the hell out? Comment below, let me know. Other than that folks, if you're still watching, thank you and you've liked this video so if you haven't clicked it already, please go like the video. <laughs> if you're new here as well, subscribe to the channel. I'm usually good for at least one video a week. I really do want to change that in the future. I do want to have uptick in my upload schedule but it's there's a lot to figure out so i'll get there one day but it's not today <laughs> or this week uh yeah it's been jj buckets it's been real